The number one problem that is ruining your Pokemon investments. I mean, you're probably making this Pokemon investing mistake, which costs you a lot of money, and it's a very common one. When thinking of investing, there's a few rules that apply across every medium. And if you have read the book, The Psychology of Money, it goes into great detail about what makes a successful investor. And look, to save you time, I'll answer that right now for you as I've read the book multiple times. I'm gonna just paraphrase this in the most simple terms. Believe in what you invest in because if you believe in it, you'll stick it out for the long term and not be redirected elsewhere. So pretty much if you stick with something because you believe in it, you'll be there in the long term and you will see the good fortune come as the years go on because you believed in it. You know, there is a lot that needs to be understood about Pokemon investing and there's certain mistakes which cost people a lot of lost profit down the line. Pokemon investing is a term just that naturally gains a lot of scrutiny based on the fact that most people associate Pokemon cards with shiny cardboard. However, they avoid one common part, their rarity and the pop culture status associated with them. As a lot of you know, I have worked as a marketing professional and I use my career skills and insights to link them to the topic of Pokemon collecting and investing. I have been collecting for many years and through my own journey, I've seen some great growth on some of my products. And this is just through years of being involved within the hobby and seeing how the different phases pan out. Collectibles and rare nostalgic items have a liquid market of serious buyers for many years. And this most certainly isn't just isolated to Pokemon. You know, like a common oversight that people make is that people usually think for things to be valuable, they need to actually provide value. But collectibles technically provide no value. In fact, they are the complete opposite of that. Just like how the old Apple computers sell for thousands of dollars, when in fact their technology is completely outdated and they are technically useless in today's modern world. Their technological use has little value in today's world and they are just a relic from the past. Yet, they are more expensive than a modern MacBook Pro, which has far more better application in the real world. So when thinking of collectibles, you must reformat the way you think and think more about human psychology and nostalgia. In fact, the collectible market should be taken very seriously. The collectible and rare market expands to old Apple products. It expands to collectible coins, video games, consoles, baseball cards, vintage records, and yes, Pokemon cards. Now, Pokemon just recently experienced their second boom with the Sword and Shield era that just passed. And there's actually a few golden sets to look out for at the moment, which I will reveal at a later stage in this video. But I mean, like Evolving Skies booster boxes, which released in August, 2021, rose from 110 US a box to 700 US a box in under three years. That is some serious growth. And that is not something that should be taken as a joke. Right now, if you had a sealed Evolving Skies booster box and you just placed it on eBay as an auction, it is very likely that you would sell that above 670 USD, no questions asked. It is a highly liquid product. So you know, the number one problem which most people suffer from is their time horizon when it comes to products. The issue that has plagued the hobby since 2021 was that booster boxes rose in value within a few months, and now everyone thinks this is a quick flip, but that is never the case and that was just an anomaly. Thankfully, those days are over. However, it's left a lot of unrealistic expectations because like anything, guys, anything that's worth it, it takes time. In fact, a lot of people will lack patience. So the fact that it takes longer to grow is only better for the serious collector and investor as less people will likely hold onto these products as they don't have the confidence in the long term of the product. But Pokemon and investing in collectibles is a unique form of alternative investing and to understand it, you need to experience it. When we experience something, it becomes part of our consciousness and sometimes other people cannot see what you can see. And this can be quite profound in its effects. The word Pokemon investing may make people laugh. However, it is a genuine phenomenon. Let me explain this with a great story about conscious awareness and how powerful words are at creating realities for ourselves. And it all starts with the color blue. Now, I'm gonna show you an image of this color wheel right now. 
And if I asked you to spot the color blue, you'd probably be able to pick this up instantaneously, right? Well, what if I told you when anthropologists studied a tribe in Namibia known as Himba, they couldn't distinguish which is the color blue. This was a fascinating discovery as the Himba tribe don't actually have a word for the color blue. And because they don't have a word for it, they weren't able to identify it in their consciousness when presented the color. Now, this is where it gets interesting. The Himba tribe may not have a word for the color blue, but they do have 19 different words for the color green. So when they are shown this color wheel with greens and asked to spot the odd one out, they can distinguish the odd one out straight away. But a lot of us struggle to identify the different green in this wheel. So the study found that without a word and a way of identifying it as different, it is much harder for us to notice what is unique about it, even though our eyes are physically seeing the same blocks in the same ways. The research shows that what we learn and label with words in our consciousness has such a strong pull for our decisions and perceptions in the world. It's really interesting because spotting the blue is so obvious for many of us. However, on the contrary, the Himba found it very easy to identify the different green in the wheel. So they found that obvious and we found it obvious as well. But who is right? When a word like Pokemon investing becomes a mainstream term, it takes a form of its own. So you need to ask yourself, can we begin seeing something that others only see as cardboard and a complete waste of money? So you know, sometimes this makes people think you're crazy if you can see something that others cannot. But you gotta really ask yourself, who is right? So how does this relate to Pokemon cards in any way? Well, for some of us, we have had exposure to the feeling of collecting Pokemon cards as kids. We felt and know the feelings of researching older sets, and we have distinct awareness of the memories and the feelings associated with opening packs. We also understand how nostalgic it becomes and how powerful of an emotion it creates in the human soul. So when we think of Pokemon investing or collectibles in general, if we are within the hobby, we can understand the details and intricacies of this hobby, and we can understand the distinct reasons why sets rise in value. We are hyper aware of something that others cannot identify or connect with. So we can essentially see the different greens in the color wheel while others just see it as, mate, this is just cardboard, what a waste of money. Now, this isn't just for Pokemon cards. Baseball collectors have experienced this for years. And if you wanna see how strong a collectible card market can be, just look at baseball cards. They are still standing strong even 50 years later. So when people scoff or laugh at you for taking Pokemon investing seriously, you should just brush it off because you are able to see something in your awareness that others cannot because you have a different lived experience which has helped illuminate the power of nostalgia and collectibles and you can see how powerful they are. Your individual life experiences have essentially given you a conscious awareness so you can see the different shades of green with ease. And you know guys, if you are enjoying the video so far, I do spend hours a week researching these topics to ensure you get value out of these videos. So if you've enjoyed the video, please feel free to subscribe. I'd love to have you on board the channel and it helps me create more in the future. But guys, the rule that you really need to understand is that you need to have confidence in Pokemon investing and collectibles, but more so, you really need to have a longer time horizon when purchasing and sitting on these products. Because nostalgia takes a long time to bake in, and it's not always certain what people will become nostalgic for. However, when I'm looking at the Sword and Shield era, I can just see how many new fans were introduced and how many new people made their own emotional connections with these cards and sets. It is very rare for something to become such a big phenomenon and then be completely forgotten about years down the line. It is very likely people will collectively want to revisit some of these popular times and reminisce of the good old times during the Sword and Shield era. And when this happens, the value of these products can go up quite high. You need to have strong belief when you can see this as a unique opportunity. So, I mean, you will hear arguments like, oh, everyone is now holding onto sealed, so it'll be worthless. But everyone knew of Evolving Skies and the demand it could have because Team Up and Cosmic Eclipse already rose in value. So if the secret is really out, 
Wouldn't that have stopped evolving skies from rising because people could see the demand straight away? No, because the irony is that it constantly keeps happening again and again. And even when people constantly have the same story, oh, modern won't go up. Yet as the years go on, it seems everyone gets proven wrong again and again and again. The reality is guys, it's a great hobby for a lot of us and it makes for an incredibly fun and rewarding experience collecting your favorite cards. But I always say it's important to collect what you actually love and don't go chasing hype trains if you don't love the product. I mean, the key to making this successful is keeping it fun and enjoyable. Do not lose that part of the equation. I mean, that's why I love Sword and Shield so much as I feel it brought so many good memories. And I really rate it as a set at the moment because I can see how strong the demand for older sets are. I mean, we can now see Fusion Strike and Chilling Rain on Huge Rises and Silver Tempest and Astral Radiance have now been sold out. So right now, it seems like Lost Origin and Crown Zenith are the ones to be on the lookout for. It's funny because there are a lot of myths and misinformation surrounding this topic and people sometimes get lost in it all. Like a real common myth is that modern products will one day be worthless. I actually expand on the nine biggest myths in Pokemon investing in this video right here. I cover some of the biggest myths I have heard throughout my time in the hobby and I provide clarity on these topics. Click on that video if that interests you and I'll see you there guys.